This is Curcio Bustle. Bustle, bustle, bustle.com. And it says, is therapy speak making us selfish? And this obviously, you know, rings true to me, considering what I've been speaking about at the beginning of the podcast, regarding how selfish I can be with my time and just myself overall with family, friends, partners, whatever it may be. It can get a little bit crazy for the old AG. So when I saw this article, it definitely spoke to me and my issues and, you know, my inability to maybe hold on to friendships, to maintain them, to grow them, to find them and all that malarkey. So this is courtesy of Bustle. Is, is, there, is, therapy, is therapy speak making us selfish? And um, let's read it together. It says, last summer, Anna, 24, was dumped by a long-term friend of a text. While making plans to meet up, the friend pivoted and told Anna she wanted to end their five-year friendship. When Anna asked if it was something she did, her friend told her she wasn't comfortable answering and that there was no more room for discussion. <laughs> this feels so accurate to how i had somebody essentially break up with me in the same um sort of way but the way that it happened to me was that it felt a lot more it felt way more uh, it felt way more brutal because if anything it felt more like a a rejection of their old self as opposed to my old self and I've said that before. I think there are people out there who do this weird thing where they kind of, what's even, yeah, lifestyle shame is probably the best way to term it. They lifestyle shame and they kind of um, maybe character, evolution, shame, whatever it may be. There's some sort of thing that people do when, when they decided to make a change for their life and they want the next sort of tip. Instead of taking personal responsibility for how they've maybe fucked up their life until this point, they start to look at other people and what they've done to influence them. And usually it's, it's singular people, which is really strange because you'd imagine if you're being influenced bad, badly by people, it'll be people, right? People's plural. It wouldn't just be one person. But they usually, it's only one or two, three or four individual people who probably aren't connected to each other at all. And usually it's, I feel like, more of them trying to cope with the idea of wasting time so you don't want to take responsibility that you're wasting time so you make it seem as if it's this other person who did it and then when the breakup happens there's like a there's like a refusal to explain because you're just pissed off that you've wasted so much time you don't want to waste more time to explain and then you kind of want to push that away and then of course if you sprinkle in some stuff you know some other stuff that we kind of all know about and whatnot when it comes to adult relationships, that's when they can kind of get a bit crazy. But I think at the time, and even till now, to some degree, I didn't take it the best, but I understood. But then I also thought to myself, you know what? I didn't do anything wrong, really and truly. Um, I'm still the person that I was when that, you know, when I met that person until now, maybe I've evolved in some ways, but I haven't necessarily did anything wrong. And if that's their decision and that's their kind of path that they want to lead, no problem you know do your thing but there's no congratulations there's no pats on the back or anything and you know if tomorrow i heard they stepped into traffic and got run over by a truck i wouldn't shed a single tear so it's kind of one of those kind of vibes it's like it's sort of like a, it's sort of like an acceptance and okay but also a complete coldness on my side of things so i think people are sometimes the same as i've said it before i think friendship breakups are legitimately worse than relationship breakups like and i'll die on that hill um continues because i don't wish death on any flipping ex i have but ex friends yeah you know what i mean yeah anyway it continues i'm in a place where i'm trying to honor this person said i'm in a place where i'm trying to honor my needs and act in alignment with what feels right within the scope of my life and i'm afraid our friendship doesn't seem to fit in that framework i could no longer hold the emotional space you wanted me to and think the support you need is beyond the scope of what i can offer in my opinion, I think quotes like this or sending your friends stuff like this as a way to break up with them is incredibly rude and unnecessary unless they did something to you that would warrant this sort of explanation. I feel like in general, this is kind of feels like an inability with some people to really just say what they mean or mean what they say and just act like an adult and kind of just be like honest and speak clearly with people or just having just an inability to just have any sort of manners and any sort of tact or whatever it may be because this just seems weird because you'd be offended if somebody sent this to you at a job that you worked at for more than five years and they let you go like this right this is you'd be offended if this was a job how much more if it's your a supposed friend sending this to you i can no longer hold the emotional space you've wanted me to and think the support you need is beyond the scope that i can offer what what is this startup speak all about this is some nonsense just saying loads of words for the sake of saying loads of words 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, fucking hell. It continues. Anna was hurt and frustrated. It felt like she was ending the friendship with a HR memo. She said, like, I would have hoped that it would res respect me enough to give me like, something more straightforward or at least more kind. Even if the friendship ha couldn't be saved, Anna says she would have at least liked to have had the opportunity to respond. Let it be more discussion. Let me say, okay, this is what I need. This is how I'm feeling. This is how you're feeling. Let's talk about it. She says it felt super one-sided. Yeah, and of course, I, f I felt the same way too, but I think... <sighs> I've, I felt exactly the same way as this person's feeling, right? Feeling like it's very one-sided. You're getting only one... Ex you're kind of getting only one side of the flipping discussion of it. And usually it's because the other person can't handle the other side of the conversation because it's a bit heavy. It's going to maybe address topics and areas of you know of their life they probably don't want to go over again maybe they're legitimately trying to move on and just speaking to you in general is kind of stirring up all types of emotions and feelings they don't want to address in any kind of meaningful way and some people's way of getting over things is just kind of cutting cutting you off completely and i understand that no problem but i also think if you were legitimately friends you do maybe owe somebody an explanation one million percent especially if they ask you for it i think some people are maybe you know we're all kind of adults for the most part you're maybe smart enough to understand or to maybe glean why somebody doesn't want to talk to you anymore you could probably read between the lines but i feel like if somebody ask you like ask you yeah to say hey agostino do you mind explaining to me why you stop talking to me why don't you want to pick up my calls anymore why don't you want to hang out da, 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 da. you probably owe it to them as a friend to say hey this is why you probably do and not in some you know stupid we work startup nonsense hr speak like as friends would do like be honest and be upfront however harsh it may be however difficult it's going to be for you to address the situation or to kind of stir up those emotions you owe it to your friend to do so but on the other side of it on the other side of it also i feel like no one owes you any explanation about anything and you shouldn't expect it you shouldn't only get closure because you have explanations because sometimes people are just you know people just don't know what they're talking about or maybe you don't agree with what they're saying or whatever it may be or maybe you'll have a different point of view and if they decided that it's enough and they don't want to talk to you anymore that should be enough for you to respect and be like you know what this is hard for me to deal with same with a relationship breakup you know I, w I might want to rescue this i might want to hold on to this i might want to still make this work but if that person has legitimately turned them off and they've kind of you know they offer you any and you know it's really difficult to turn someone back on again you've seen it before even with exes you might end up bumping into them out and about somewhere and you hook up here and there but it never goes back to how it was before ever so even more so when it comes to a friendship if they think the friendship was somewhat toxic or detrimental to their life whatever it may be it's never happening you're better off just moving on and trying to find other people who can you know maybe give you the friendship that you need and deserve as opposed to trying to rescue that thing there but in the kind of crux of it it should be down to hey respect their wishes and also understand that no one really owes you any explanation about anything at all zero and if you do get one it's a bonus but you should probably navigate your through your life kind of having that kind of ideal and also you know adopting the idea that you're ultimately responsible for your own emotions and feelings behind certain things and how you deal with certain things really and truly you can't really control how some people see you how to respond to your whatever it may be that will be my point of view on it but what do i know um as you just said here honestly someone cutting you off with no explanation just shows how immature they are and that they'd rather duck and hide and communicate like a grown adult exactly yeah exactly as i said the same thing um but i just think nowadays no one really communicates like a grown adult anyway in general right that's why most people don't answer phone calls that's why most people don't respond to text messages straight away because they don't know how to kind of react like an adult so they'd rather just that's why ghosting maybe is so popular in my opinion because people aren't grown-ups they're not mature enough they don't have the emotional um bandwidth to be able to somehow you know conflict resolution their way through those sort of murky dodgy waters they rather just kind of ghost people and then hope that kind of lapse or that kind of time in between is going to be enough of a message to tell that person hey i don't want this i don't want this i don't want this whatever it may be whereas maybe addressing it is a little bit too difficult to do but what do i know it continues it says in recent years oops wrong thing let's go back here 
it says in recent years therapy concepts like self-care and boundary settings have shown up everywhere online with instagram accounts and other social media communication community story showing mantras and advice advocating for self-actualization tiktok therapists like nadia adisi and therapy jeff offer tips for struggling with anxiety self-esteem and people pleasing therapy speak quote unquote perspective pers prospect press oh, why can't i say that word prescriptive language describing certain psychological concepts and behaviors can be found everywhere from group chats to dating apps now we have more language to advocate for ourselves and our needs whether it's cancelling plans when we feel overwhelmed or any relationships that no longer serve us my kind of gleaning from this just as an outside observer is i feel like a lot of people self-diagnose themselves anyway when it comes to issues um regarding you know something that you'd maybe deem within the psychology type of space i think people psych self-diagnosed way too much and maybe people's inability to really be grown up so and kind of address things in general and i think this can this also speaks to people's inabilities to ask for raises to inquire about promotions um to basically put in a resignation like how many people that you know working now working in dead-end jobs they don't want to be at because they're afraid of leaving because they don't want to let quote unquote somebody down which is nonsense like people just don't know how to deal with things in general in their own lives um so it's no surprise within friendship groups people are now you know kind of leaning on this nonsense because it kind of just makes them feel good about being a shitty person and about not growing up and about not kind of facing up to the issues at hand in my opinion that's what i would say it continues says it's important not to be able to set boundaries and advocate for yourself occasionally though the emphasis on protecting one's individual needs can overlook the fact that someone else is on the other side of the boundary setting exactly in 2019 for instance a relationship coach twitter thread offering a template for telling friends in need of support that you're at capacity at the moment drew criticism for equating friendships um to emotional labor Earlier this year, a, a clinical psychologist TikToker's video outlining how to break up with a friend went viral after viewers pointed out that it sounded like a massive PR. Sorry, it sounded like a missive from PR. Critics have noted that personal relationships require a touch more compassion than some of these therapeutic blueprints offer. And we see it already. We see it, we see it, we see it already. Honestly, we see it already. We see it kind of with all these podcasters and stuff, breaking up and whatnot. A lot of these podcasts in general, the ones I listen to, right? Case in point being the Joe Budden podcast with the original lineups. Most of those, the premise on them, I thought like the kind of selling point, the main reason why you tuned in was because of that kind of like um, entourage type of feel, especially if you're a boy, right? You kind of maybe didn't have many friends or maybe some of your friends were scattered around the country or scattered around the world because they moved to college or work, whatever it may be. And Joe Budden at that time represented to you what your friendship group was in some way shape or form you saw maybe your friends in a way you acted with the people that you know in the same sort of way or maybe you just had a parasocial relationship with them and you kind of felt like you were in the room with them but regardless the main selling point was a friendship so it was really weird as outside observers to see that when they all broke up most of the reason why i feel like they broke up the way they did really badly and in, in, you know with really bad blood to this day was because there was a lack of understanding that they were friends and that if they were meant to break up and things were going in different directions there needed to be a little bit more of a softer touch a little bit more of care in the, the things that you're saying and consideration of some of these feelings and emotions it can sound really soppy and really gay but it's the truth when you're dealing with friends especially in business you kind of have to have that because if you don't have that I guess even Miles said at the time who was a former co-host if you don't have the friendship then what's the point of this because the whole reason why we're doing this yes we're making money and stuff and we're whatever it may be but we're also doing it because we're friends and it's fun to hang out with your friends and make money on the side as well but when that goes it goes and that lack of care and attention and understanding you know emotionally of the friendship side of things especially from Joe Budden like he kind of had that switch he kind of turned off and turned into a boss and decided they didn't deserve an explanation or anything else that's what kind of soured it and kind of made it weird and i just feel like I, I feel like that was representative of just how we are as people in general i just feel like we all have and even i'm i'm guilty of it we don't have an ability to kind of end things amicably it's all it's either it kind of like you know it kind of just dies a slow death a death by a thousand cuts or it dies really really harshly with really kind of painful emotional 
kind of circumstances but it's never just in the middle of like hey two people coming together and say hey it's not working out at the moment we're both going in different directions i still got love for you whatever it may be but you know if you ever need anything from me i'm always going to be here but in terms of us being friends how it was before it just isn't going to be that and then kind of shaking on it it's never that or hugging on it it's always kind of just opposite ends of the scale which is just too crazy in my opinion um what you're saying here what a base take az i can only control my actions and responses is silly also to try and change someone's mind who clearly doesn't want to fuck with you exactly yeah it's painful honestly it really is like i've been there and i'm and i think i wouldn't say i'm special in this regard but i think it's even your emotions get heightened when you don't have many friends to choose from in the first place and then the ones you have to choose from say nah leave me alone i'm good on you that can be really difficult to take um and i would say it's probably worse than somebody ghosting you because at least with ghosting you you can create this narrative in your head that maybe they're busy maybe it's the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the job or you know you can create all these excuses to kind of absolve you from any kind of emotional strain or stress or kind of you know just hurt feelings but when somebody says categorically out of their mouth like words or types it and says hey don't call me leave me alone that can relieve some some serious wounds but again you can you cannot cannot put all that blame on that person you can just be responsible for your own emotions and just say you know what they've decided what they've decided and you just have to kind of move in a different direction and hope the next person you kind of bumps into kind of appreciates you appreciates you um you know for the friend that you want to be to them uh number one here says what do you what what do what do job do with I, I guess you mean what job do i do too many to too many to name too many to name but i'm a jack of all trades jack of all trades master of none <laughs> that's what i am um it continues here it says lucy 29 and from kentucky had a friend who repeatedly insisted on dictating meetups in the name of self-care when we would make plans they would change them the day before she says trying to reschedule and rearrange events will be met with that plan has changed we're going to alternative activity i'm setting a boundary so weird Again, this is just this is honestly an excuse to be a cunt from what I'm seeing here, reading in this article. This whole um therapy speak thing in friendship is just an excuse to be a cunt. It feels like to me. Because I feel like this is also representative of like I always thought about pandemic, but I think the pandemic has changed us in ways that we probably will never understand until maybe, you know, many, many, many years past. But I feel like because the pandemic forced us to all kind of burrow down and look after ourselves and, you know, become a little bit more reflective and take some time and concentrate on our health and our family and whatnot. I also feel like a lot of us came out of the pandemic thinking our friendships that we had before were, this, were in the same place. Clearly they weren't because some people just move on, change, whatever it may be. And I feel like people's inability to kind of articulate what that change is or kind of fess up to it is what's led to this essentially like we've all become a little bit we've all become weirdly selfish and we've all come really kind of um uh we've all come really selfish and also we have a weird dislike for explaining ourselves in general i feel like i feel like because everyone's kind of doing their own thing so no one really wants to explain why they don't want to be your friend and if they do explain it they don't want they don't want to dig into their emotions or whatever it may be so you just kind of go for the flipping therapy speak because it sounds like a fucking cover letter that you'd send for an interview or for job applications right i have this many experience i did this i did that it's not so cold not personal there's no emotion to it there's nothing it's just whatever it is on the on the text which is crazy it continues here it said if lucy tried to protest about this person keep changing the schedule um she says her friend would accuse her of being pushy which ultimately made her reluctant to make plans out of fear of coming off as demanding or toxic that is that is 101 gaslighting isn't it god almighty the quote it did make me doubt myself and think that i was being needlessly demanding or making people feel uncomfortable by expecting plans to be upheld um i still get knee-jerk reactions of not wanting to be the brother it's not going to be a bother when plans are cancelled. Katie Hackler, 34, from New York, once invited four of her friends to an intimate dinner at a pizza restaurant to celebrate her birthday. One friend showed up 25 minutes late. It was a little rude, a little annoying, but not the end of the world, Hacker says. Um, I felt like I was still super polite to, hear and to, to her and warm. 
After dinner, a Loki bar visit the night wrapped near early and Hackler went home. Close to midnight, the late friend called Hackler. She says, I need to address this. You made me feel unsafe and unloved tonight. Hakala says, I went, excuse me? And she's like, yeah, your demeanor was a little off and this has been building for a while. You made me feel really left out. <laughs> so hold on. This friend, again, this, the, and this is what I'm saying. We're so emotionally immature as people nowadays, myself included. It's kind of scary. Katie Hakala is 34 from New York. I'm assuming most of her friends are either five years younger or five years older. So even if they're, even if, even if they're 30, and even and even worse if they're flipping 40 you should know better than this if somebody's got especially for a birthday dinner or whatever it may be right um an intimate dinner at a piece of restaurant showing up 25 minutes late is inexcusable it really is especially for a birthday because you'd imagine you want to get there maybe before them to get them a drink or to get them a present or maybe if you're going to be late at least come with something in your hand i bet she came late with nothing in her hands which is even worse and then after that the dinner continues on no bad vibes because it's somebody's birthday and then you have the neck the gall to text them and say hey you made me feel unsafe can you imagine can you imagine the flipping front on these people sometimes and again that's what i said i just think as a society as people we're just so unable to communicate with each other in any kind of meaningful way that this is what it's led to you know, the the polarity that we have in politics, in societal issues, is kind of maybe now trickling down into our personal relationships and friendships. We just can't talk to each other. It's just screaming or it's ghosting. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> screaming at each other or ghosting. Nothing in between. Like, this is ridiculous. Or maybe sometimes even gaslighting. Um, Hakala had no idea what prompted this outburst. And on her birthday, no less, I'm racking my brain to think. What did I do other than invite you to a really intimate dinner with my closest friends and hug you and have drinks with you? She says, of course, I got off the phone and immediately cried and felt like shit. So, again, just proof. And I bet you this lady, um, Hakala, is most likely still friends with this person. Because we're all so emotionally immature, but we also all kind of relationship wise and maybe spiritually just bereft. We don't have anything. We don't have any friends. So the ones that we do have, even if they're shitty and they're cunts, we still hold on to them because we're so, so fucking lonely. It's so sad. Like, legit. It's so sad. But that's legitimately the truth I can see here. And those people know that and they take advantage of it. Shit people in life, they know that. They take advantage of it. They know you're not going to go anywhere. They know you don't have that many friends. So they really do take liberties. That's absolutely crazy. But I'm not reading the whole thing, but you can see the article here. It's called Is Therapy Speak Making Us Selfish? It's available on bustle.com, written by a writer called Rebecca Fishbean. Rebecca Fishbean, published on bustle.com. Check it out if you haven't already. Please do check out in full. It's a really interesting article. Um, which is saying, chat, I just went through this recently. It's actually crazy you're talking about this, but I'm glad I can reason through things like you're taking the words out of my mouth, like the commentary. Thank you, Uch. Appreciate it. Yeah. Look, man, it's, I don't know. It's difficult, man. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. I don't know. I don't like to, because I think it's important to also have friendships and to have relationships with people. I really do think so. I think, you know, essentially, you know, this whole born alone, die alone adage, I don't prescribe to it at all. I think, you know, living a life of loneliness is just not the life anyone wants to live. Um, what's the point of having everything in the world if you don't have anyone to share with it? Blah, 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 blah. But you also have to understand that people nowadays are just so weird. They're so flipping weird. Um, we're all kind of emotionally stunted. Like I think of it maybe as a as a kind of, um, maybe maybe as an analogy. This is a weird analogy to make. But have you seen that video? There's a picture going, no, I think that Drake must have shared actually. I think in general, right? Drake shared his picture let me see if I can find it. Drake. Let me see if uh Drake shirt. Let's see if that works. This is this works. But Drake had this picture that he shared. That's it one. Hard that's one. It's called Hard Feelings, right? Let's see if I can find it. Drake shirt hard feelings. Uh let's see if I can get this up. Yeah, there we go. It's up here. Cool. We got it. We got it. So 
I'm not just sure if you guys are aware of this, right? But this Drake shirt went somewhat viral on the flipping interwebs because if you can see it here i'm sure if you're not listening to the podcast you won't see it but it's drake on stage wearing this black leather overshirt or baseball shirt i'm not sure what it is on stage i think he may have been at coachella i'm not too sure no not coachella some live performance i'm not sure what it won recent live performance and on the shirt he's got embroidered on the bottom here hard feelings harder dick and for me i feel like friendships and just in general life we're living now whether you're a millennial, a Gen Z, whatever it may be, I just feel like we're all so emotionally immature as people. We're all kind of in a weird state of arrested development because Drake is like, what, 37 or something like that, around that kind of mark, you'd imagine. And he's wearing a shirt like this. This is something that you'd wear if you're like in your fuckboy era, if you're like, what, 25 and under or something. So I feel like we're all kind of like this. We're all maybe five years less mature than we actually are our Philippine biological age. So it's no surprise that we're all getting ourselves caught in these weird loops, in these weird situations with friends and whatnot and exit. It just becomes strange. Like all these and it's no surprise also maybe that there's such a everyone's flipping loves these podcasts like fresh and fit and all these other type of podcasts within that manosphere or these relationship podcasts where they speak about the same topic ad nauseum every single episode about who should pay for dates uh, where should you go um do girls you know go for your money only or all these flipping nonsensical tired boring topics but these videos these views these these videos views on youtube the views on tiktok and instagram they say differently I might not like them, but clearly there's a big audience for them, right? There's reality TV shows, Dating in the Dark, The Love is Blind, Love Island. They, they don't stop with these nonsenses. And I feel like the reason why is because we're generally all emotionally super, super immature, myself included, when it comes to it. We just don't know how to deal with our emotions in the right way. And we're not mature in just other things in life also, because I can't imagine many 25 year olds nowadays who would wear a shirt that says hard feelings harder dick but yet for drake at the big age that he's at with a kid and shit right with the biz with businesses with responsibilities he thinks this is somewhat fly and it sometimes somehow represents him and what he's about when really it's something that you should have been wearing when you're much younger but i think it's representative of where we are in the culture in general we're all just big babies we're all adult babies Adult, adult babies, mate. Goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga. <laughs> oh, anyways, moving on from that one. 